May we stand for our call to worship. For the Bible says it this way, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth stand still and be silent. And know I'm God. Because I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Would you be seated as we pray our invocation? Father, here we are. I get excited because you've allowed us to see another first Sunday. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, man, March was long, and March was it was cold, then it was warm, then it was cold, then it was warm, then it was cold, 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 and then it was warm. But yet, God, um, you brought us through. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I don't know about anybody else, but God, deep down, in my heart, I just want to say thank you. Because I know, I know, I know it wasn't my strength. I know it wasn't my wisdom. I know it wasn't my cleverness. I know it wasn't my charm and all that, but it was by your grace. Yes, your grace. And your mercy, God, that you allowed us to get to April 2023. So God, we thank you for this day, this day that you have made. We thank you, God for this hour. We thank you, God, for this privilege to worship you in spirit and in truth. And so, God, we ask that you be with us in this place. Be in our midst as we sing, pray, preach, read scriptures, and do all those things that will bring you closer to us so that we might go out and live better lives for you. For we ask all these things in the mighty, matchless, and marvelous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Our opening hymn is, I forgot, hymn number, No, Not One. No, Not One. No, Not One. Hymn, hymn No, Not One. I'm going to tell you the number in one minute. Hymn number 258. There you go. Hymn number 258. Gail and, um, Gail's big, oh, the candle lighter. Thank you. That kind of one. And really, and really, you should see how she did it to remind me of it, but I'll fix that later. <laughs> uh, as we bring light into the sanctuary, it's a symbol. We bow to the cross in reverence to the Savior who gave his life for us on it. We like the two candles. The candle on the right represents Jesus who came in human form. The candle on the left represents Jesus who came as the only begotten Son of God. And here's what we do when we light the candles. We say, God, come and be with us in this place. Man. While another thou art calling, don't pass me by. God, meet us here. Meet, meet us here with our knees and all the things that we are going through right now. Be a very present help in our time of trouble. So as we light the candles, we say, Lord Jesus, be with us in this place while we worship you in spirit and in the truth. And so now we sing our opening hymn. It's hymn number 258. Um, no, not one. No, not one. It's one of those familiar hymns that uh, my grandmama and my mama used to sing. And my grandmama sometimes when things were going on in the house and things. Anybody have had stuff go on in the house? I mean, for real. Let's let's be real for a moment. Anybody ever have stuff go on in the house? And and when when things would be going on in the house, I'd hear her whisper. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. She started real soft, and then she'd say, "No, not one. No, not one." And she'd just be shaking her head. Then she would say, "None could." kill all our soul's diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Then after a while, she'd get kind of loud, and she'd say, because Jesus ha, knows all about my troubles, and he will guide me till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. And as we sing this hymn this morning, here's the challenge. I, I want you to sing it like you've had trouble in your house. Uh, 
I, I want you to sing it like maybe March was really rough for you. I, I want you to sing it like you've been through something and, and you recognize that, that, that there's not a friend like him, that no one is high and holy. No one is like him and yet no friend is so meek and lowly. No, not one. No, not one. And then, then I want you to confirm in your mind and in your heart and in all that you have, yes, Jesus knows all about my trouble, my struggles, and he will guide me. Anybody know he'll guide you? I mean, for real, you know that he will guide you till the day is done. Hymn number 258. Would you join with the choir in singing this hymn written by Johnson Oakman, hymn 258, no, not one, no, not one. May we stand as we join with the choir.
join me, um, we're going to read a responsive reading. So in the back of your hymnal, in the back of your hymnals, on the second page, 26. On the second page, the second 26. On the second page, the 26. The second 26. You'll see in the middle of that page, you'll see the word Palm Sunday. You see that? All right. The second page on page 26, you'll see the word Palm Sunday. And the responsive reading for this morning is Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Now, if you just flip, if you look to the next page, you'll see where they have a, a, a responsive reading for Monday, Thursday, which will deal with what will happen on this Thursday as we celebrate Jesus uh, passing out the Lord's Supper and washing the disciples' feet. But this morning, I want us to read together this responsive reading found on page 26. It's called the Palm Sunday Morning Reading, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. I'll read the, the first part, and you'll read the... I'll read the dark part. You'll read the light. Let's read responsibly. Okay. We haven't done it in a minute. Okay. <laughs> Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That is the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those in the earth together and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for sharing with us. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of St. Mark. The Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 11, found in your Bibles in the pews on page 711. Now, don't try to play that number. That's just happened that way. For the saints, for the saints. I was just saying it for the saints. Page 711, Mark chapter 11. Okay. And this is Mark's, Mark's record of the Sunday that we're celebrating now, Palm Sunday. Okay. This is how Mark says this is what happens. As a matter of fact, this passage is found in all four of the Gospels. Okay. And most believe that it happened after that big celebration he had. I was talking about it last week where they were celebrating the resurrection of Lazarus and people were partying and excited. And this was the time when, when Jesus' ministry was like, poof. I mean, his ministry was so like on point that everywhere he went, there was a crowd. Yeah. Everywhere he went, people were just all around and going to thong them. They were just, he could hardly get places because everybody was around. His ministry was flourishing. He was popular. Okay. And this is the week just before he goes to Calvary. Less than six days, he will be dead. And we find these words by Mark. Now when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, and he said to them, Go into the village opposite you. And as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it. And immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found the colt tied by the door outside on the street, and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, What are you doing? Loosening the colt. And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded. 
So they let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it. And he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple. So when he had looked around at all things, as the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Thus ends the reading of our scripture. I read the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 11. I read verses 1 through 11. Amen. Sister Laverne will lead us in prayer. you to help me. All right now, all right. Oh, Lord, I want you to help me. hospitals, God, in nursing homes, God, that are sick at home, God. Father God, I'm asking you, God, to be with my sister and my brother-in-law, God. Be with this family, God, as we are going through right now, God. God, we didn't know this day would come, but God, you knew. So God, we're just asking you, God, to help us, be with us, Lead us and guide us, God. Lord God, this is the first day I've shed tears since we heard the news, God. God, we know, God, that you don't make mistakes. And we love you, God. And we just so thankful that you allowed us to have Daryl for 33 years. God. 
God bless this service, God bless our pastor as he bring the word, God. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen.
service on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Clifford Barnett Sr., our First Lady, and members of the congregation. Lots of announcements this week, so um, get ready to write down some dates and times um, as we celebrate this week. Today is Palm Sunday, as we know, this opens our Holy Week, and on tomorrow, the parent body, excuse me, the missionary meeting will be held tomorrow, parent body, I was correct, um, tomorrow, April 3rd at 5 p.m. A joint Monday service, Monday Thursday service will be held on Thursday, April 6th at 12 noon. And the speaker is Pastor Michael Mattis. On Friday, the Wilmington District will host the Good Friday service, the Seven Last Words of Christ. That will be held at 6 p.m. at Somerville AME Zion Church in Leland, North Carolina. Next Sunday, we will have a district Easter sunrise service. That will be at 6.30 a.m. Sunday, April 9th, and that will be at St. Philip AME Zion Church. And then our regular church service will be here. Resurrection Sunday service will start promptly at 9.30 a.m., and there will also be an Easter egg hunt following the service. Also on next Saturday will be the Walk for Dahlia, the sweet baby um, of the Bernard family. That will be on Saturday, April 8th and that will be kicking off at 8.30 a.m. This can be either done virtually or in person, and they will be at Founders Park in Leland, North Carolina. Next week, our very own Terry Artist Jr. will have his senior recital just before he completes his studies at UNCW. That re recital will be at 7.30 p.m. at the Cultural Arts Building, Beckwith Recital Hall on the campus of UNCW. Also very important, the Wilmington District Men of Zion will host a prostate cancer awareness class. That will be held next Saturday, April 15th at 10 a.m. And that will be held here at Warner Temple Church. Men, this is not just for you, this is for your loved ones too. So go get information because um, we need to make sure that we are checking ourselves just as we have our women in October. Children's Sabbath will be on the following Sunday, April 16th at 3 p.m. And that is sponsored by Connections Matter. And last but not least, we extend condolences, sympathies to John and Angela Lewis and families. All the losses there, but. These are all the announcements that I have. Please govern yourselves accordingly and have a great week. Come, Keisha, for sharing the announcements, and we hope that you will bear them in mind. Um, we do continue to offer Christian sympathy um, to the Lewis family as they will be um, having a service of celebration tomorrow for um, their son, Daryl, and their service starts at 1 o'clock. So we ask you to continue to lift them up in your prayers. As a matter of fact, let's pray for them now, would you? Bow your head. Um. 
I don't know what a day will bring, but I know who brings the day. And at times, God, um, it seems like what you've given us is heavier than we can carry. But what we trust you with, God, is that even when life gets heavy, that you provide for us the strength that we need to get through. And that's called grace. It's called daily bread. So, God, we pray for the Lewis family even right now. We pray for us as we go through this with them that um, you will sustain us as you promised you would do. And so the Easter Lilies remind us that resurrection is coming. Ah. The Easter Lilies remind us that we don't end in the grave. The Easter Lilies remind us that when we're absent from the body, we will be present with the Lord. So hold us in your care, God, as only you can. For we ask it all in the mighty, matchless, and marvelous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Um, please note that announcement um, today. If you didn't get your palms, um, we have them in the back. We'll make sure that you get them on your way out. Um, also, we just are glad to see all of you. Glad that you're here. On Saturday, of course, we all know we're going to be walking for Dollar, um, and that starts at 830. And I think we got a message for her. James, are we ready for that? All right, we got a special message we want you to listen to. And James is working by himself this morning because Pastor Barnett was supposed to pick up the twins. <laughs> and then I didn't remember until James said, am I and am I coming? And I said, yeah, they're coming. And then they said, well, you were supposed to pick them up. And I went, oh, <laughs> no. So they're on their way, I think. Right. So we're excited for her, as you may not know, those visiting, um, Dal is um, scheduled for a heart transplant, and we're waiting on God to continue to do what God is doing. She's, she's still striving and just doing great things, and God, it God, isn't God an awesome God? I mean, he's just, <laughs> man, he keeps blowing us away, he keeps blowing us away. So please acknowledge those announcements. Uh, we have calendars in the back. If you didn't get a calendar um, last week, you can get one for the activities that are happening this month. All right. We'll now hear another selection from the choir, and then we'll hear our message.
Praise God. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us that on the cross, he died. He rose, and he rose for us. What a mighty God we serve. Um, please note that this week is Holy Week. This is the last week, literally the last week that Jesus lived on earth. Okay? And so today is we call Monday, Thursday. Um, and I mean, not Monday, Thursday, it was Palm Sunday. And at the end of this day, he actually goes into the temple, and he looks around at the temple, and then he walks away without saying anything at all. And then you'll find that throughout the week, um, there are certain things that he does, but we'll be celebrating what he did on Thursday, Monday, Thursday, we call it. That's the day where he passed out the communion, and the day that he washed the disciples' feet. And then on Friday, all of this will be gone. Friday, you'll have a black cross, a black, um, a black satchel on the cross um, representing what happened at Calvary. We'll be celebrating that at Somerville at 7 o'clock with the seven last words. Those are the seven phrases that Jesus uttered from the cross okay, at his most excruciating time of his life. But then, as I said earlier, when I was praying for... Um, Daryl, that the Easter lilies remind us that Sunday is coming. Anybody glad about that? That reminds us that he didn't just stay in the grave, that, that we serve a risen Savior who lives today. Okay? So we invite you to be a part of all of those services. Um, Sunday, next Sunday morning, we have the sunrise service at St. Philip at 630, and we have our Easter program here. Um, and the kids are in the back practicing and all that, so we invite you to be a part of that as well. Let's pray. Father, would you be so kind as to move Clifford out of the way and allow the real preacher to come so that, God, when we leave this place, we might go home and live lives. Would you speak now, my Father, for thy servant here that he will obey. Amen. I do have one additional announcement to share with you. Um, at City Council on this Tuesday, uh, an ordinance is coming before us to talk about um, making the Giblin Lodge, which is located on 19th and North 8th Street. It's the second oldest Masonic Lodge in the state, and it's predominantly a black lodge. And we're going to um, receive a ordinance asking us to make it a historic site. And if, they, if that ordinance passes, what that means then is that um, it, will be, it will be built like, like it was before. It will be re refurbished. It will be supported by funds from, from um, the city that will make it a, um, a historic site. So if you're interested in that, that will be presented on this Tuesday at City Council at 630. We invite you all to come and be a part of that. Um, I want to talk from the subject entitled this morning, Donkey Duty. All right, yeah. Donkey duty. Now, that's crazy, Pastor Barnett. What in the world is donkey duty? In Mark chapter 11, Mark records what's happening in the life of Jesus. And, and Jesus is now very popular. Remember I said it earlier that people were thronging around him. They were all around him. And he had just finished celebrating the resurrection of Lazarus. And they had just had a party for Lazarus. And there were those who liked Jesus and followed him, then there were those who didn't like Jesus and wanted him dead because they messed up their business. And so we find Jesus is celebrating and, and all the people around him is a great multitude of people because people had come, Lord, to celebrate the Passover. They were preparing for the Passover and folks would come from all over and meet in Jerusalem. And so Jesus looks at two of his disciples, and he says to them, um, go get a donkey. You, you'll find the donkey opposite the city where you are. Go get it. He's going to be tied up. When, if he's tied up, and I want you to loose him, untie him, and bring him to me. Oh, yeah, by the way, the donkey has never been ridden. And so the Bible says that Jesus picks two of the disciples to go. Now, what's unique about this, Terry, is that in this passage, it doesn't say which two disciples. 
It doesn't say it was Simon Peter or Andrew. It doesn't say it was John or James, John, James and John, their brothers, or Philip and Bartholomew. It doesn't say it was Thomas or Matthew, the tax collector. Nor does it say it was it James, the son of Alphaeus or Thaddeus. Nor does it say it was Simon the Canaanite or Judas, the one who betrayed him. As a matter of fact, when Jesus assigns them donkey duty, they aren't given a name. Now, and I want to share with you, listen, that life sometimes causes us to do Duncan duty. What, what do you mean, do Duncan duty? Donkey duty, I can't even say it, yeah. Thank you, wife, for saying that out loud. Thank you for your support, I appreciate that. I love how you say amen when I'm in the cluster. You know I mean? But, but he, he sends them out on donkey duty. Now, watch. Here's a couple things I want to share with you about Donkey Duty. Can you imagine what's going on with those two disciples who he selects to go get a donkey? Can you imagine what they were talking about going down from their city, Brian, to the city opposite them? What in the world am I doing this for? Why am I going to get a donkey? He's never been ridden before? I tell you what, you ride him. I ain't riding him. You know? Who's going to untie him? Donkeys kick. They bite you. I, I don't understand. What, what in the world? What am I doing going to get a donkey? Hmm. And see, the thing I want you to understand, oftentimes, when God calls us to do donkey duty, oftentimes, your name isn't called. What do you mean by that? Meaning that you know, it's, not a, it's not a prestigious position. It's not a place where everybody knows, oh, yeah, that's who that is over there. Your name is not even called out. Your name is not showing up in lights. It's just God has given you an, assi right an assignment that, that you have to do, and, and I call it donkey duty. Mm. And so they go outside the city to the next city, and sure enough, as they enter the city, there is the donkey there. Just as Jesus said. And they start to untie him and loose him. And just as Jesus said, those who were watching, hey, what are you doing with that donkey? That's not yours. And they respond as Jesus tells them to respond. And that response is, the Lord has need of it. Mm. See, the thing, the thing I want you to understand about when you do donkey duty is this is that whenever you do the donkey duty for the Lord, whatever the Lord wants done will be done. If the Lord says, go speak to that person, and you speak, something happens. See, the neat thing about donkey duty is that as you do your donkey duty, you don't know really what the results are going to be. You don't know what's going to happen in the end. You don't know what God is in store. But I promise you, if you do what God has assigned you to do, and oftentimes he assigns us to do donkey duty. Now, what's a donkey duty? Well, a donkey duty could be one of those situations where you find yourself in the house, and then they walk in, and you've got to have a conversation that you may not like donkey duty. You may find yourself being in a position where a teenager bumps into you and you bump into that teenager and then they start laying all this stuff on you that perhaps you aren't really ready or prepared to carry, but it's an assignment for you. It's called donkey duty. Or perhaps you might be working on a job and, and there's this one person who's on your job who waits for you to get out of your car. And as soon as you get out of your car, they run to you with a bunch of stuff. You go, oh, my God. Man, that's, that's donkey duty. You may be in a relationship, and there are things that happen in a relationship, and God causes us to have to go this way or that way. And, and oftentimes, we don't know what the results will be. But because we obey the master, we're called to this assignment. It's called donkey duty. So most of the time your name isn't called. It's not a glamorous assignment. And you do it because you've been told to or because you've been voluntold to. Because you've been given this assignment. Anybody know what I'm talking about now? You with me so far? 
You know, you, you remember those things where, where you didn't want to do it and go, oh, man, do I have to? Oh, my God. Oh, oh Lord. you really want me to do? Okay, God, well, if you, yeah. And so I would imagine those two disciples, I don't know which two they were, but those two disciples, they were discussing this among themselves. They were wrestling with what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. And sure enough, as soon as they got to where the donkey was, all that Jesus had said came true. Mm. He said, loose him and bring him to me. You see, oftentimes we're called to do donkey duty and it just happens. Like you can be in the grocery store and you're in aisle seven and you go to aisle eight and as you get to aisle eight, you run into somebody who all of a sudden just starts pouring out on you. You ever been there? You know, or you're standing in the line and, you know, you're just kind of minding your own business, you know, kind of looking forward. And then the person beside you to the right or to the left, they'll, they'll start talking to you about stuff. And you go, wow, God, what's this? It's a donkey duty assignment. Wow. And so what we find then is that when you have donkey duty, oftentimes your name may not appear. When you have donkey duty, you don't always understand why or what's going to be the outcome. But in donkey duty, you trust that everything that God says will happen. And see, one of the things that the disciples found out was that even in the midst of all that was going on around, when Jesus says, go get the donkey, untie him, they'll ask you, what are you doing? Tell them the Lord has need of him. It all happened. Why? Because God is still in control. Let me just say that again. Listen, listen, listen. No matter what the duty is, no matter what the assignment is, understand that God is still in charge. Understand that God is still under, in control. And God, when he says, go and walk the donkey, God says, I've got this. I am still in charge. I'm so in charge that I will ask you to go and get a donkey that no one has ever ridden on and bring him to me. They'll ask you what you're doing. Tell them the Lord has need of it. And so the results of doing what God calls you to do are more phenomenal. They're just like, Pfft. they blow up. Why? Because God has placed you where you are and we've got to do the donkey duty assignments in order that the kingdom might flourish. You see, if they didn't go get the donkey, Jesus wouldn't have written on him. If they didn't go get the donkey, they wouldn't have pulled down the palm branches and started shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. If they hadn't have got the donkey, they wouldn't have been able to make all that noise until the religious leader says, tell them to be quiet. And Jesus says, I can't tell them to be quiet. Because if they hold their peace, the rocks will cry out. So can I just share with you, listen, listen, let me just remind you that God calls us to do donkey duty. And it all works out for God. It all works out for good. And then the last thing I wrote down here just for me is that believe it or not, and sometimes we're the donkey. Hmm. They're just sitting there for a minute. Yeah, sometimes, John, I, I don't know why I called you out, John. But it, just, it seemed like it fit. It just was like a perfect fit, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometimes, sometimes God needs to send somebody our way because I need pouring into. Mm. Sometimes God needs to send somebody our way because we're struggling with life. Sometimes God needs to send somebody our way just to get us from where we are to where he wants us to be. And I thank God that God doesn't give up on us and that God still uses us and God still sends people to come and minister and to bless us and to help us along the way. Mm. So Laverne was right when she said, Lord, I need you to help me. Anybody else? I mean, I need you to help me. I mean, I need I, I know, I know. God, I know.
know it looks good to just dress up. And I know it looks good to just put on church clothes. And I know it looks good to play the part and the function and all. But Lord, I need you to, to help me. To help me on my journey. Uh, and to help me on my way. So, can I tell you? Don't give up on your donkey duty. But that boy won't listen. I know. But that's donkey duty stuff. But I'm tired of saying the same thing over and over. I know. I know. But it's donkey duty stuff. But it looks like it's not working out. I know. But it's donkey duty stuff. But I don't always want to go. I know. I don't want to hear. I know. I don't want to run into. I know. But God is saying, listen. Do the assignment. Because I've given it to you. My grandma would say, Lord, help me do what has been assigned. Anybody got some donkey duty stuff you've been running away from? Huh? You know how. I don't know about you, but when God says, make the phone call. And then anybody ever struggle with that? You know, now you need you to call so and so. Oh man, God. Oh. Do I really have to? Yeah, yeah, you got to. Why? I need you to be a listening ear. I need you to be pouring into people. I need you to love our children. We'll be doing a children's Sabbath on the 16th. And it talks about this idea of connections matter, meaning that what the disciples did, they connected the donkey to Jesus. And with all this going on in the world today, um, our children need to see positive connections. Uh, they need to run into, we say one caring adult can alter the life of a child. You put them in a positive role. And they need us when they're stinking like donkeys. They're smelling. But they're taking life on by the storm. And we're ready to take our hands off. No, we need to grab them and hold them a little tighter. So our prayer as we celebrate this Palm Sunday is God reminds me that if you give me a donkey duty assignment, do not complain. Remind me that it's been assigned my hands. Remind me, God, that there's something better on the other end, and I'm just a conduit. I'm just a connector. That's all. I'm just a connector. I'm just a connector. Because you have greater things in store. Father, thank you for your word. Forgive us if by chance we um, walked away from a donkey duty assignment because um, we wanted a higher task to do. Jesus. Father, forgive us if um, we didn't go when you said go or 
We didn't speak when you said speak. God forgive us if um, you were nudging us to go down aisle seven, but we 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 chose to fight against your nudge and we went down aisle eight or down nine. Mm. God forgive us if um, by chance there was somebody who wanted us to return the call, but we said, I ain't got time. I don't feel like being bothered. I don't want to be messing with that nut. And we, um, didn't return the message. But God, I pray that you'll help us to recognize that donkey duty stuff is assigned by you. So help us to do what has been assigned our feeble hands to do. And then lastly, Lord, can I just thank you for, for being patient with us? <laughs> woo! 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 When we acted like a donkey, when we acted like a jack, when we acted crazy, God, thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for sending those to come get us. Thank you, God, for loving us even when we didn't love ourselves. Mm. So, God, we give you thanks and we give you praise. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, for you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Let the church say, amen. amen. Can you give God some praise in the house? <coughs> so the song says, I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes to your will, and I will obey. Because when, when your spirit speaks to me and it says, go do this donkey assignment, go handle that donkey work, my answer will be yes to you, Lord. So if by chance you're here and you want to give your life to the Lord, today's a great day to do it. Ah, oh, what a good day. Today's a great day because he says, as I stand at the door and I knock, if you hear my voice and open your heart, I'll come in. Or if by chance you're here and you want to make this your church home, we'd love for you to come. Man, we'd love for you to be a part of this ministry and help us to build the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven. And if you have any special prayer requests, we'd love to pray with you and pray for you. So would you stand with us and join with the choir as we sing? Yes, Lord, yes.
we reaffirm our faith in you. And we say to you, yes, Lord. 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 At home, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In my marriage, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. For my health, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. With that neighbor that keeps needling me, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. With teenagers that worry me to death, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. With finances, yes, Lord. With yes, Lord. All that's happening around me in yes, this Lord. world, God, I just say yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. And when your spirit speaks to me, God, with my heart open, I will say yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. I'll say yes. Come on. In the back of your hymnal, on the first page 12, in the back of your hymnal, on the first page 12, you'll see our ritual, the way we do the Holy Communion. And here in a Methodist church, we believe that anyone who believes on the Lord Jesus can take the communion. We have what we call an open communion table. And you'll see why we have an open communion table as we share with you the invitation for receiving the communion. So in the back of your hymnal, on page 12, you'll see the words, the Lord's Supper, and the great invitation. May we stand to our feet as I share with you this great invitation. And this tells us why we have an open communion table. It says this, if any man sin, 
We have an advocate with the Father who is Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Wherefore, ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy way, then take this holy sacrament to your comfort as you will sit at your seats and bow your head, making your humble confession to almighty God. You may be seated. And we're going to pray together the prayer of general confession. It's right in the middle of page 12. Let's pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The prayer of pardon says this, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto thee. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll pray together the call act and it's at the top of page 13. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayer of humble obsession says this, we do not presume to come to this Holy table of merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in our manifold and great mercies. We're not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may live and grow thereby, and that being washed, through his most precious blood, we may ever more dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The prayer of consecration, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who will not tender mercy to give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and then instituted in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us. O merciful Father, we only beseech thee and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, we partake of the most blessed body and blood. And on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Represents the 
brother Jesus was going to preach, he's going to call it in my attention, the sins of the entire world. I take it now against it. As an accusation that you judge me too much. So he chooses to come back home. <coughs> Let's pray. It's very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. And all the company of heaven, we lord and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God, oh, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be, glory. So you have in your hand the elements of the communion. Would you take now the bread, flip it over and open it up. This is the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, broken for you, broken for me. Take it now and eat it, feeding on him in your heart with faith and with thanksgiving. And if you flip it over, you'll see the grape wine. It represents his blood, which flowed freely down Calvary for your sins and mine. Take it now. <coughs> Pull the top back and drink it all. That it might preserve you and keep you until he chooses to come back for you. God, thank you for allowing us to take the communion one more time. For it reminds us of your love for us and our love for you. May we go out and live lives that will be pleasing in your sight. For it's in the mighty, matchless, and marvelous name of Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. 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 The blood.
brought light into the sanctuary which represents his presence. We bow to the cross in reverence to the Savior who gave his life for us. The cannon on the right represents Jesus who came in human form. The cannon on the left represents Jesus who came as the only begotten Son of God. But notice before she extinguishes the candle, she lights her candle lighter. Because the symbol says, now Lord, before I dismiss you from here, I want to take you with me. Take you with me back home. Take you with me on my job. Take you with me everywhere I go. Let me let my light so shine. Take you with me even on donkey duty assignments. That those who know me but don't know him would want to know him because they ran into me. For now unto him who's able, he's able to keep you from falling. And he's able to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Again, may we ask you to remember to keep in prayer. Um, the Lewis family who will be funeralized, Daryl will be funeralized here tomorrow at 1 o'clock. We hope to see all of you um, in Leland for the walk on Saturday at um, 8.30. And then the third thing I want to share with you, we have the, um, the palms in the back, if you didn't get any palms. And also my wife and I will be passing out some invitations. We've got a young man who's going to be getting married on April the 23rd. And he wants to invite you virtually, okay, because they're getting married in Williamsburg. So we've got some invitations. So make sure you get one from me. God bless you. Having now entered to worship, depart and serve. God bless you. Thank you all for the love, prayers, and support you've been giving us in this difficult time. Um, quick update on Dahlia. She's doing good. She's stable and recovering well. Just continue to pray for us. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Dorian and I would just like to say thank you all for the love, prayers, and support you've been giving us in this difficult time. Um, quick update on Dahlia. She's doing good. She's stable and recovering well. Just continue to pray for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 